Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing, and today we're going to talk about cutters. I couldn't even figure out how to film this video to set it up because I wanted you to see the variety, but I don't want to make you sick. So I'm just going to stand here and talk for a minute, and then I'm going to put you on a stable mount, and we'll look at each one individually. One thing I want you to see is I have these pretty much arranged from price left to right. There's a little bit of variation, depends on where you can use coupons and where you can't. But the Cricut right here, that one is available at a Tuesday morning sometimes for I think about $8. If memory serves me, I paid 10 online. The green one, well, the green one I'm pretty sure is like 100. Let's not tell Mr. Crafting and Relaxing what I paid for that, but I'm sure it was over 100. Then the orange one on Amazon, and I'll put that in my store for you so you can see it. You might be able to find that at a Joanne and get a coupon for it. Then you have the Tim Holtz ones right here. Those are um 30 to 50 somewhere in there and in my area, those aren't available at stores that have coupons usually. And then when you see orange, you know it's Fiskars. And Fiskars makes, oh my gosh, probably a hundred different cutters. That might be an exaggeration. I'll talk to you about some of those. And then we have a Stampin' Up! one. That one I'm not as familiar with, but I wanted to show you some features on it. So we're going to go through, we're going to talk about these. I'm going to tell you based on price, based on maybe versatility, I think... Finding the perfect cutter has to do with your hand strength. Do you like to sit or stand? What types of projects do you like to do? There's so much variety. I will probably always be searching as I change projects. And I'll talk to you about that as we go through the video. I do have other cutter videos also. You can watch the old ones, but since this is the newest one, this is August 2020. I think this has to trump the things I said before. This big orange one on the right, right underneath the green one, is new to my cutter analysis situations, and I'll tell you why. First, I want to give you some background in case you don't watch my channel. Most of the time, I make cards, and I'm using most pretty loosely. So I cut my, I make a lot of cards, so I cut my own 110-pound cardstock. That has pushed me to keep looking at cutters. I also make journals and junk journals. So I cut a lot of 12 by 12 and large things. I've recently gotten into making these books, which means I also now cut chipboard. The cover is in here and chipboard is that craft colored brown thick chipboard. It's not corrugated cardboard, it's dense. So the versatility of the projects makes a big difference. If I bought my card bases, I wouldn't be as concerned. 110 pound cardstock is tough. Listen, this, this is 110. It's sturdy and it, it's hard on cutters. The number one thing I want you to know before we get started, you do not need to spend a lot of money on a cutter to be an amazing paper crafter. You can, I mean, you have a ruler and a pencil, right? But also, for about $10, you can get a cutter that will support you for months, maybe even years. The volume of stuff that I am making is hard on cutters. I am hard on cutters. If you watch my channel, I'm messy. I years ago had a Fiskars cutter that I liked, and it was a track slider like this. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. I'm so messy when I craft. One night, I turned around, took a step, and heard a horrible snap because I had put my cutter on the floor, covered it with 12 by 12 paper on accident, and then stepped on it. So sometimes that is why I have to buy new things because I'm messy and hard on them. I have been told that Fiskars has a warranty, a lifetime warranty, but I'm pretty sure they don't cover me. I'm, I'm a different beast. This one, the Cricut one, it is... On their website, you can buy it on Cricut, you can buy it on Amazon. I'll have the link for you in my store and the link will be down below in the descriptions. So if you view this as an enabling video and you wanna pick up a new cutter, I'll have the links down below. This cutter is fabulous. It is versatile. It's one of those ones that has the arm, has a sliding blade, just like the Fiskars cutters. Fiskars makes a whole bunch of these in slightly different colors with slightly different bases. 
Unfortunately, I have given all of mine away, so I can't show you those now. But if you go to buy one, one of the things to look for is get the one that has a wider base. There's one that goes out about six inches. That's really nice for a card maker. But if you don't get that one, that's fine too. I treated myself to a new one specifically for that reason about two years ago. That's what started this cutter dominoes. That new cutter that I bought was not straight and I was not happy and I was super frustrated. It took me a while to figure out it wasn't me. I now know because Susan Tootsie Tucker told me that I could have emailed them and they probably would have replaced it. I think they probably had a bad batch, but that's what started these dominoes. And now that I've discovered other cutters, I don't know that I can go back to a slider like this, but I do use this one for travel. I use it at home sometimes for 12 by 12. If you cut tons and tons and tons and tons, the tracks in these, same for the Fiskars, are gonna get a little bit rough. There's really no coming back from that. You can change the blade for sure, and you should treat yourself to a new blade every once in a while, you'll be surprised. And your blades, sometimes you can get them at stores near you. Sometimes you have to order them online because the cutters evolve. And be sure you pay attention because Fiskars has a couple different kinds of blades on theirs for sure. This track will wear out if you are making hundreds of cards. If you want to make a card every now and then for someone's birthday or do some projects with your grandkids, this is a fabulous cutter. Any cutter really is. Any cutter that you get with a coupon, just make it a value priced cutter. And a cutter like this, I think they all have an arm so you can do 12 by 12. So if you're just looking for like a weekend hobbyist, that is a great cutter. I wanna show you a couple of different things and let's talk about hand strength and dexterity. I'm gonna go through a different, a couple of different categories. Then at the very end, I'll tell you what my favorite cutters are and why, because there's different categories. I'll tell you right now, value and price, it's this one all day long. I love this cutter. It's a great value. I haven't had one that's crooked. I just like it. What I will tell you is I did once show up at a crafting event and the blade had fallen out. I had done something. The blade was still in the drawer at home. So on these cutters like this, be sure when you pick your cutter up and take it with you that your blade doesn't fall out. You'll be sad when you get there. Now let's talk about hand strength, dexterity. Maybe you have arthritis. Maybe you have a hand that doesn't work as well. I find Fiskars and probably some others, make some of these cutters that you have to push this thing down and cut. Let me show you. So these have, many of the cutters have a track thing right here, and then they have this push down thing. Fiskars also makes a giant one of these. It's a big platform and this thing's a little bit bigger. I do not love these kind of cutters. This one is okay for me. I didn't have to push really hard. There's no measure for that on camera, right? Oh, see, I didn't push hard enough. <laughs> That's a great example for you guys. I used to have the giant cutter of this. And yeah, you have to push. This blade might be dull too. My friend Noni gets these at garage sales and stuff. Let's see if we can get it to cut. There we go. So you have to push pretty hard. And the great big one, same thing. The great big one was kind of heavy. Back then I was going to friends' houses and scrapbooking around my house. It took up a lot of room in the closet. It was bigger than the big orange one that I have over here, I think, because it had this giant platform. And it's not like I'm cutting papers bigger than 12 by 12. That's my max. I, I don't like these. I don't like the kind where you have to push this thing down really hard. I just find that it's hard on my hands. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis is a thing in my family. I don't know if it's a thing for me, but maybe that's why. So cutters like this, unless I find one someday that's like butter, I don't like them. And it's not a brand thing. I just don't like this push down thing. I stand usually to craft and they are better if you're a person that stands, I think. But I think for sitting, they're just, they're, I just don't like them. That cutter that I had, I got as a gift. It was probably easily a $50 item and I donated. That gives you an idea, but it's personal preference. If you have um, maybe some issues with your fingers, but your wrist is good and you, this might be the cutter for you, right? Because all you have to do is push down with the ball of your hand, with your palm, and you can move it back and forth. There's no details, there's nothing. 
the the guard and the bar might be a little much for you because they're separate. In a lot of these cutters, it's one thing. This one has, you lift this up and you lift this. So if you have any sort of physical issues, you can experiment. So I'm gonna set this one aside because I'm, I'm not in any way in love with this. This Stampin' Up! one is very similar to the same idea as the Cricut. I think we would call these track cutters or slide blades, I don't know, something like that. But notice there are two blades on this cutter and they're different colors. Fiskars offers you the same thing. They have for years, I'm sure they still do, but they don't sell them with the cutters as commonly as they used to. So what Fiskars does is there will be an orange one and a black one. I believe the orange one cuts and the black one scores two colors. That's really nice because you can get them both. You can leave them on here, grab it out of the drawer, take it to your friends, whatever, and you'll have a scorer and a cutter all in the same device. Which means if you're a crafter on a budget and you're trying to not buy a bunch of things, you do not need a scoring board because your cutter will do it for you. Some of these big fancy cutters that I'm gonna show you, they're not gonna score. Not on any given day are they gonna be a scoring tool for you. But cutters like this, you have the versatility. I haven't checked to see if Cricut makes a scoring blade for this because I have a scoreboard and I never use it like that. So let me show you how it works. When I'm sitting around using this cutter, what I would do is, since I don't know this cutter, I have to check. I would take this light gray one, which is the scoring one, and I would just leave it up there. And you can cut, I mean, you should start at one end, but you can cut anywhere. And you can see, it's great. It's a little rough, maybe. I'm also wondering if this is supposed to have a thing right here, but maybe not. Then you can just, if you want to score, I just leave this blade down here and I use this one. Okay, and you can go back and forth a couple times. And then I have my scoring mark. And I think it would be heavier. See, I do think it might be. It, it might need a little thing like this in there. I'm not sure. Either way, it works. It's a garage sale cutter and it scored just fine. Look at that. And what happens is in a cutter like this, if this gets worn out, you can sand it or you can order a new one usually. And you can pull them out and rotate them too because they're cubes. So you have four sides. I've never worn that piece out, but you could. I don't stick with a cutter that long. So anyway, cut and score, same device. Really versatile, definitely helps with the value. Fiskars is carried at most of the big stores. Joanne, Michaels, you're more likely to be able to use a coupon on those. Let's talk about Tim Holtz. If you're a paper crafter, if you are an office supply person or you make formal journals or something like that, you might not know, but Tim Holtz is a mixed media and crafter gentleman that makes a whole bunch of stuff and his products are highly marketed. They're not usually in the big box stores. You can get them online. You can get them at a little bit nicer stores usually, but that doesn't mean everything he makes is fabulous. I know it's okay. I do not like this cutter. I just, I didn't like it from the beginning. It is my friend Noni's. She bought it. I tried it. I didn't buy one. Honestly, I'm not sure she uses it. She went out and got the big green one when she had this one. So I don't think she uses it. On the back, these items store. This is a little extension leg. It pops in here. And this is the handle. Pops on. And what you have is a big guillotine cutter. Okay, yeah, it's, it's as bad as it sounds. It cuts really nicely. You lift it up, press the guard down, and push down. You're gonna get a beautiful cut, beautiful. Here's the trick. On this one at least, and maybe this one wasn't great, if you don't remember to pull this blade this way, like you have to kind of push it in, it's sliding because it's off the counter a little bit this way, you won't get a good cut. I'll show you. See what I got? And sometimes when I borrowed it, that's what I would end up with. And then I would be annoyed because I was trying to do card bases. 
and I couldn't get a clean cut. I was wasting cardstock if I didn't remember to pull that in. I think other people have this and I don't know that they all have that. I don't know. Maybe this should have been returned from the beginning. You guys can comment. I also don't love this because it goes to six inches, but then out here it's floppy. So if you're using a 12 by 12 piece of paper, you just don't have that flat surface to work on. And I have realized that I like having the flat surface. I like having the flat surface to line things up because when I rest on the 12 over here, I have to be careful to just touch here and then hold it. And you can't put your hand right here because there's nothing there. Still, it works perfect. If you see one of these at a garage sale, I'm sure you'll be totally happy with it. Then the parts come off and it goes back here like this. I'm not sure that uh, Noni puts the handle on most of the time. I don't either. I just use it. It's kind of annoying. Then there's this one. So this is a Tim Holtz cutter too. Came out around the same time. I love this cutter. Love it. I will use this cutter all day long. I like this cutter because I'll show you why I don't like this cutter. And there it is, right? If I want to trim this piece of paper beautifully, I can't get it in there. The only thing this cutter doesn't do is 12 by 12. Now I would take the end off of this anyway, because I'm going to cut it down. But if I want to trim this green part out, this bad boy is amazing. The guard is nice. The guard also comes off. I think I've only taken it off once for something. I don't have that problem where I have to hold the blade in. Look at that. It's beautiful. And this is Cartabella. This is thick paper. Really nice, thick textured paper. I got a really clean cut. I just, I don't know. This one, it fits me. I will use it for everything. If if I'm using 12 by 12 paper and I've cut it down to a smaller size like this and I want to make a perfectly detailed nice cut, I'll reach for this one. I love it. If I only bought six by six papers, I would get rid of every other cutter and I would only use this one. That's how much I like this cutter. cutter. And I think this cutter was $40. It's stable. I probably lost, yeah, I lost one of the feet. I'm really hard on things. I drag them around. I drop them. I toss them in piles. So I lost one of the feet, put foam mount on it. It's sturdy. I like the flat. I would like the base of it to have more markings. You see how that's something to keep in mind when you look at cutters and shop, look at where they break, how far they go, and how well the markings are labeled on the cutter. I would have really liked to have eighth inch marks on here, not just quarter, because I use eighth inch a lot. And it annoys me. I don't know how to explain this. I wish they would have put the notches right here on this side, not up here. Does that make sense? I'll show you what I'm talking about. Look, see how the notches for the measurements are down lower. They put centimeters on this side. Those of you who use centimeters, great. They make great sense but at least they put the notches for the inches down here and see on the Stampin' Up, the markings are down here. This was a bad design for a paper cutter. They should have done it different. That is my only complaint on this cutter. I love it and I'll use it all day long. The way I measure craft supplies in my room, and I try and mention this in my videos every time, is don't buy something just because I have it. I tell you, sometimes when I'm using supplies, if I broke this or lost it, I would replace it immediately. This is one of those items. I would replace this thing immediately. I wouldn't even like wait to see if I could find one at a garage sale. No, I would order it on Amazon immediately. Okay, that's where I stand on that. This I love, I couldn't say the same about it because I have a ridiculous amount of cutters that do 12 by 12. So it, heaven forbid I step on this. I, I probably shouldn't just buy another one. Let's talk about this bad boy. This was a recent splurge. This was one night when I was sitting around and I was using the what I refer to as the green one. I'm gonna put them here so you can see them both at the same time and get an idea of scale. I can't remember exactly what I was doing. I think I mentioned it in a video. 
And I just decided that's it. And I went on Amazon and I ordered this one. And honestly, I should not have purchased this green one. When I purchased it, I was at a store. There were two different people. The store owner told me to buy this one way back then. That was at least a year ago. She uses this one. She likes it. And the other person guided me to this one. There are pros and cons. I'm going to sit these both here and do a comparison because I feel like these two are equivalent. They're both 12 by 12. They're both high end. I would not call either one of these a value cutter. Okay. We are in a price point that is ridiculous. I acknowledge that. If I wasn't trying to be open and share with you, I would never admit to you that I had bought both of these cutters. I want you to learn from me. Okay. The green one has a light. It's very hard to see on camera. It is a precision cutter. You can cut a curly hair off of the paper. I mean, it is this bad boy. If you have anything that's crooked, look. Now, I never need to cut curly hair. So while that's fun, it's not useful. So one of the things I don't like about this green cutter is it doesn't have the markings on both sides. So if you wanna cut a half inch and you know this paper is four and seven eighths, you have to subtract your four eighths and move it over and cut it like that. Cause it doesn't have any markings over here, but it does have the light. This one has those markings. So I've gotten to know this cutter. I did the unboxing and then I waited because over here it goes up to, I think two and a half inches right here. So both sides. I wanted to get to know the cutter before I said my opinions, right? So that I could really test it out because I think sometimes you love something in the beginning and then you try it for something else and you go, oh no, that's not gonna work. I mentioned quite a while ago, I damaged this green caterpillar crop. The company was very nice. They sent me new, this slider blade and this metal part and I replaced them. And it is 99.9% perfect, I think. I don't think it's absolutely all the time. Sometimes it gets a little glitch in there. I did that somehow making card bases. So 110 pound cardstock. I probably tried to do multiples. It says in the directions for this green cutter, it is a precision cutter. Do not force it. Says that very, very clearly in the directions. I think you know exactly what I did. I forced it. I got stuck and I forced it. For me, I'm rough and tumble. I like to make a lot of different stuff. I don't like the arm thing, just the same thing as Tim Holtz. I thought I would like that because it takes up less counter space. In fact, I was avoiding this orange one because of the footprint on the counter. But the reality of it is, if you don't keep the space clean, you can't open the arm. So I always left the green arm open because otherwise I'd make a mess and not be able to open it. But I don't like the fact that I can't put my hand anywhere. I have to put my hand right here to hold this. Things. Chipboard and really heavy duty stuff, that is where the caterpillar crop and this orange one separate. This orange one cuts chipboard like butter. Because I've already damaged my green one and I know I wasn't using chipboard at the time, I'm not even going to try the chipboard in here. I'm not going to do it. Noni and I are doing a project together and she had this and I said, let me take it home and cut it in the orange one because I don't want you to put it in your cutter pillar crop. I not only use chipboard, I mostly use recycled products, cereal boxes and that sort of thing. So I like having the versatility to go from a 20 pound piece of paper that I might've done a gel print on to chipboard in a heartbeat. I don't want to have to get out a different cutter or change and I don't want to be worried that I'm going to damage it. This one, I'm not exactly sure who this one is for, but I will tell you a couple differences between the two that might be a separating factor. This moves really, really nice. It's light, it's easy. If you have some sort of impairment, you could cut with these two fingers. No problem, not a lot of strength. This thing, I'm surprised at how hard this is to move. I'm guessing I very often use the palm of my hand like those other cutters, but you don't have to push down. So it takes that away, but there is some drag. So if you have arm, shoulder, hand problems, using this one all day, probably exhausting. When we go to the beach and I craft for 
you know, eight or 10 hours straight, I am guessing I will reach for this one whenever I'm doing small cuts and I will just use this one for 12 by 12. This one also cuts 110 pound cardstock to make my card bases absolutely fine. Just remember it only does this way. It goes at the five and a half mark and it'll make them this shape, but it won't make the tall skinny vertical cards, right? It can't make this one because the paper won't go in there. Not the end of the world. So that gives you an idea. This one's nice and easy to use. Whereas this one, it, I don't know if you can hear it, but it is, there's drag. I mean, that thing drags. This one, it's light. It's almost like, I hate to talk about it. You, you know the scale at the doctor's office where they move that thing and it gets, figures out how much you weigh? It's like that thing. I mean, it's light. So that alone might be the difference. Hand strength, arthritis, some sort of injury, impairment, disability, that could be it. Now, this one doesn't have a paper guard. And what I mean by that is it doesn't have anything to hold the paper down. I was using my wooden ruler and then I lost it. And so that was part of my problem with this cutter too, because you can put it here and hold it if you want a really narrow strip. Like if you were cutting a quarter of an inch, you might want on, maybe you had a two inch wide piece of paper and you wanted to cut a quarter of an inch off of it. You would probably want a ruler to put it down here. It's pretty hard to hurt yourself unless you went from this side. And then this one, the you have to put the blade at one end or the other to lift this up. I mean, you can lift it in the middle, but you're not really supposed to get stuck. Hand injuries, I think Caterpillar Crop is probably better. The light is a really cool feature, but it's not a game changer. It, it's not the end of the world. If you have vision problems though, this light, oh man. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Sometimes I forget and leave it on, but I've never had to replace the batteries. So I'm gonna tell you, in the world of ridiculously overpriced cutters that we do not need, I love this one, very much so. I would have bought it sooner had I known. And at this point, based on what I know now, I've only had it, what, maybe a month. If something happened to it, that was my fault, right? Like, oh my gosh, what if I drop it coming home from the beach or something like that? I would replace it. That is thick. I don't buy chipboard, but Noni bought this and it is crazy thick. It's called medium weight. It doesn't say, I mean, I use other stuff and it cut. It, it took some muscle, but it has a beautiful cut. In fact, this is the commercial edge it came with <laughs> and this is mine. There's not a ding, not a hair sticking off, nothing. I'm gonna do it one more time. I do actually need this cut, so I wanna be sure I end up with the right measurements, not sidetrack talking. And I use cutters pushing and pulling. I think it just depends. Now, I have a back injury. I could not cut chipboard repetitively on this thing all day long. I just couldn't. If I had to cut a bunch of chipboard, I would probably have to use this thing. Uh, so that's what I'm talking about, physical issues and depending on what's going on. And I can try it. Let's see. And it's just because of that pushing and pulling mechanism. Twisting is a really big deal for me. So let's try it on here. Let's hold this sucker down. Let's push this. We'll hold the handle in. Whew. Okay, I could not cut chipboard on that all day long. The cut is not as perfect. I think in general, I can't cut chipboard all day long. That's okay. A couple pieces of chipboard can keep me busy for days. All right, so we talked about value and price. I, I'll tell you something bad. I think one time I saw this cutter on sale, clearanced in a pile at Joanne for $40. I am sure it was the same cutter. It was an out of the way Joanne in a small town. It's by our beach weekends. And I didn't buy it because I already had the green one. And I thought, well, I don't, that would just be frivolous. Maybe there are unicorn prices on this that you could pick up. 
I've talked about price. I talked about physical hand strength, versatility. If you're going to make all different sizes and change things and you don't really know where you're headed, which I think happens a lot for crafters, get yourself a 12 by 12 track cutter. Even though I love this one, I don't believe you will only buy six, six by six papers. You just won't. Somebody will give you a bigger one or you'll see something that's so beautiful, you don't even think about it. You just buy it and bring it home. So I think for versatility, a 12 by 12 track, that's probably the way to go. And over time, as you do different projects, your need for different cutters might change. I just recently got into the type of book these and that's what uses the chipboard for the cover before that i had used some cereal boxes they're thinner a couple junk journal type things for my july daily if memory serves me this was a cereal box and i glued two together so that it's thicker but it was an actual chipboard so it just depends on what you're cutting you can cut cereal boxes just fine with these uh, when, when I say these, I mean general category of track cutters. I don't necessarily mean just the Cricut one. Okay, let's see if it will cut this chipboard. It does the top so that we could take a pair of scissors. And get the job done. And it would turn out just fine. You'd have that fold line. Again, versatile. You know I love this one. If you have some kind of coupon or you see a Fiskars one on clearance, I like the Fiskars ones too, as long as they're straight. And if they're not straight, tell them. If you have any questions about cutters, let me know. I hope I answered your questions. Like I said, I have other videos from when I've purchased cutters along the way. It is my belief that I am done buying cutters for a while. Off the top of my head, I could be wrong. You guys might remind me about one. I can't think of a cutter that is out there that I don't have. Is that true? I think I might've talked to somebody about one recently. Thanks for watching and I hope you're taking time for crafting and relaxing. Bye-bye.